Day 26. So as you can see for this plant, uh, the first true leaf is more well developed. It's almost bigger than the remaining surface area of these leaves that have been cannibalized, the cotyledons. But you know otherwise this plant has sort of seemingly stagnated in growth. So this is a good example of a plant that's been stunted in growth because of the seed husk that refuses to fall off. So the first true leaf has a little bit of a different shape. It's rounded. Uh, the growth on the top is inhibited and I don't know if plants have a mechanism to stun growth when they sense that there's no more room to grow in but for that leaf that's uh, unfortunately the case so it's not as spade shaped as uh, this other true leaf um, right behind it which is giant in comparison. So there's a second true leaf developing and I don't know if there's going to be much progress in this plant. It's just very very slow. So this plant is doing well. It's a recent seedling that arrived on the scene and it has one cotyledon that's kind of folded underneath another plant entrapped by uh, the seed husk but you know it has this perfectly fine escape cotyledon which is photosynthesizing rapidly and a first true leaf developing. Even though the seedling got a late start it seems to be one of the more promising ones. So here are some examples of cotyledons that are getting mutilated and seedlings that can't escape their seed husks. So let me try to point this out. Um, you know, right here, you see these little sort of teeth marks. Um, those are spots where, you know, the leaves couldn't, the cotyledons couldn't escape the seed husk. Then something else happened and the seed husk moved a little bit out of the way and it continued growing and likewise uh... let's see sort of see a tear like right there uh... it's not really a tear it's just like differential it's restricted growth basically and something similar will happen here um... i imagine here so if that bursts out of its uh, seed husk someday or moves it aside a little bit then those cotyledons will continue to grow. Um, for now like whatever can escape will grow the fastest because it has you know room and it's photosynthesizing. I think this seedling will do okay. It's finding uh, its way into the ground with I think the primary and some lateral roots. It's trying to establish itself and have the shoot system go upwards. This one not so much because I think none of the roots can get into the soil at this point and the plant is basically upside down. There's a lot of seedling growth now um, since the last two waterings have been with full cups of water instead of spraying. So for instance these three seedlings that you're looking at and actually four in the center um, they're all germinating. With regards to mold this is one of the places I sprayed Lysol on. 24 hours ago but I only sprayed out a little bit of foam not you know a true spray so uh, I'll have to be a little more aggressive so with regards to what's going on in the soil uh, you know when you water a lot of loose soil like that you create these air cavities um, it's just something that sort of happens uh, if you have experience I sure I'm sure you know what I'm talking about like the soil will form air pockets and clump together in other places and you know all I'm really concerned about is you know is this whiteness I'm seeing in these pockets just water vapor uh, that's condensed on the glass or is it actually uh, or is the entire bowl saturated with mold so if it's the latter then that's a huge problem obviously and I'll have to do uh, you know, rely on chemical treatments since it's winter time and there's not that much sun uh, even if I were to place these plants um, in the sun they would only get maybe I don't know uh, an hour or two of strong sunlight tops based on the fact that my apartment only faces uh, the west basically so uh, and there's a large hill nearby blocking uh, a lot of the sun so it's just not feasible to try to grow plants and expect uh, full sunlight like people have that luxury in houses but I don't so one of the things I'm worried about is uh, you see in places like this you know it seems sort of whitish and I'm not sure whether that's mold in the soil or not 
So when you put in a lot of water, the soil um, tends to form these cavities if it's loose. Um, it, that's just the way the soil wets and later on dries out. And it could be there's a lot of mold in the soil already, but I'm not too sure. Um, if that's true, it has the potential to kill off everything. So as you can see, there's a lot more growth than there was just a few days ago. And that's mostly due to the abundance of water that I provided. So right after I sprayed with Lysol in water, an amazing thing happened. I think the Lysol lubricated the seed husk of this plant enough to let it slip off and the cotyledons are now free. So the true leaves are also free too. So this plant has a lot more room to sort of come back from the dead and grow a lot more in the next few days. And what's interesting is there's a section of the upper cotyledon right now that is white and that was probably just pinched off inside of the seed husk and never allowed to develop and never photosynthesized because it was in the dark all this time. Day 27. So this true leaf is doing well. There's a second true leaf on the way. And as you can see, there are a lot of uh, hairy bristles on the underside of these leaves, presumably to prevent things like aphids and uh, other bugs from attaching, you know, because they like to be on the side where the sun isn't. So these plants are doing well. Uh, this one has a cotyledon that's fully exposed and large, and the first true leaf is a little bit rolled up at the end, and I don't understand what that's about. Uh, hopefully it's not a sign that they're really that sensitive to a lack of water. But this other plant is uh, doing fine also. It just needs to get rid of that seed husk. The mold problem seems to be over now. Last time I sprayed Lysol on the surface of the dirt in copious amounts. That didn't really seem to affect the plants too much. And I need to water the soil again because it's becoming dry in the top layers. Although the bottom of the bowl still seems to be well hydrated. That will only feed the plants that have the deepest of roots, such as this plant. So this plant, this plant is a curious case. It fell over since the isopropanol springs, but at the same time it seems to be barely hanging on and surviving. It has a first true leaf and a shoot apical meristem that seems to be generating a second leaf. But the cotyledons are largely withered away. Um, I'm still not sure whether cotyledons withering is due to the plants cannibalizing their own leaves for resources to make more true leaves, or is it just because they didn't get enough water during that period a few days ago. There's a lot of new growth, as I said before, but some of these plants, like this one on the bottom, uh, are turned upside down, and others just don't seem to be able to make it to the soil. So I'm going to water with a cup again, uh, copiously, and hope some of these get in the right position. I'm not going to make special arrangements to aid each and every one of these plants physically. If you look here in the middle, the first and the second true leaves have branched off from each other in different directions and I believe the shoot apical meristem is that nub you see in the middle and to the left there is a second true leaf developing or at least it looks like that that could be the shoot apical meristem too the development of this plant is a little funny compared to the other ones when we look at the side of the glass bowl from this angle it appears that there's no more mold either that or that's just the appearance when there's less water in there so some parts of the soil are drying out and so I'm going to take this full cup of water and use it to water the bowl directly and whatever shifts around and happens, happens. So you can see it's not too easy to pour this cup gently. You know the water just kind of runs down the neck and goes to the bottom too so that's sort of what happened. So what's going on now is the bowl appears flooded. Um, perhaps I underestimated the water content of the soil, but I can smell a little bit of that Lysol. Um, that's probably why there's no mold. You know, there's enough there that it's disinfecting everything. I hope that doesn't harm the plants, but it'll take a while for the air that's within the soil that's been dried out to escape. And that's what all this bubbling from underneath is about. 
and this is not your standard issue pot with uh, drainage underneath it's just a glass dish it's day 28 so as you can tell it's a flooded mess and that's because I watered too much yesterday so the water level has dropped by a few millimeters today and this is an environment indoors with a low humidity because it is San Diego, California. So usually, I, you know, the humidity is around 40 to 50 percent. Um, sometimes it can even drop to nearly zero or under 10 percent. At that point, the hygrometer just says it's undetectable. But at this rate, I can expect the soil to sort of uh, drain itself uh, within a few days and certainly within a week you know there won't be much water left because the plants will have used it up so a lot of seeds are germinating but there's also a lot of other things going on so this plant's in good shape its cotyledons have stopped withering away to a degree uh, I don't really know what that was about um, the process hasn't continued so you know was that a pathogen or was it a purposeful shedding of the leaves uh, cannibalism by the plant to conserve resources, I don't know. Now this is truly bad. It's just a true leaf, the first one of this plant, hanging by a thread and I don't understand what could have caused that. You know, if the Lysol had done any kind of damage, it would have done it uh, at the base of the stem and this thing would have fallen over, but it hasn't, so that's what makes this so weird. I don't know if this plant's gonna make it. But for each mistake I make, there are plenty of seedlings uh, arising as we speak, so I can have plenty of chances to make more mistakes if need be, but I hope I've made all the serious mistakes I can make so far. Now this plant's been hanging over the edge for a while. It seems to be relatively upright, but it's a goner. You know, the true leaf uh, isn't doing well. So this plant basically has no future, even though its stem is immersed in water completely now and I don't really know what the deal with this plant is uh, that white section you see on the top here over there uh, I thought that was part of the cotyledon and I still do or it could be that you know white membranous structure in the seed uh, I'm not really sure why that would be attached but the true leaves are sort of not doing too well uh, they're kind of stunted in growth so I'm not sure what's going on there here's an example of a plant that's upside down due to the turmoil caused by the first cup watering so as you can see there's a a root trying to reach back into the soil and it'll be successful only because the soil is so flooded right now so there's so much water providing it to, with the impetus to grow see if roots don't have that kind of water available uh, what happens is they'll just kind of dangle in the air like that and stop developing. So this one is in a bad situation. So there's some dirt and mud on the root system which is pathetically undeveloped at this point but that could have enough water on it to provide a little bit of growth but it might even be in the wrong direction I'm not sure. Um, there's probably going to be signals to grow up because there's a little bit of moisture trapped with that mud on it. On the other hand Gravitropism dictates that the roots should grow downwards. At this point, a lot of the seedlings have fallen over due to their loose anchoring in the soil or their lack of anchoring. The soil wasn't compacted, as I said earlier, so whenever I watered a lot, things would just fall over. Um, so I think a lot of these will recover unless they have root rot or some kind of Lysol poisoning but I think the root rot is probably not an issue for these smaller plants because the top of the soil will dry out the fastest within an another day or two and just become moist and all the water at the bottom of the bowl may cause problems for plants that are well established. 